and Brown reporting. Now, it might seem like the perfect birthday present, a DNA test you can do at home to find out just a little bit more about where you actually came from. More than 26 million people have done tests with the leading companies worldwide, but as the database gets bigger, so does the number of surprises thrown up. Secrets that were once confined to the grave and are being revealed years later. In the first of our series, Looking at DNA, we hear from people for whom a simple test is really far more than they bargained for. Right, well, this, this album here is um, an album of family photos. First of all, here's my mother. She was very beautiful. I think she used to be a hat model, uh, part-time at least. Here's another lovely one. It's one of her with me. I was born in July 1947. That's just one of her on her wedding day with my not father. <laughs> For my 70th birthday, uh, I got a DNA test from my two nieces and from my sister. It was a lovely present and I thought it would just show me my global origins. About a year later, I realised that it had another page, but there was a stranger in there, and it really went from there. My sister did a test, and the only person that we hadn't got in common was my father, and therefore my dad was not my biological father. It was an amazing shock. We were very close together, we loved each other, and I think we really looked alike. You can see from that, we both have, sadly, the same profile. It just didn't occur to me that he wasn't my dad. It just didn't. These tests are often gifted for Christmas or birthdays, and the rates of people testing is increasing exponentially. So you spit in here. That's your genetic legacy, preserved forever. As a genetic genealogist, I have to disclose to a client or to anybody who takes a DNA test that it is a possibility that they will discover that their father is not their father. It is common enough that I have to do that every single time. And um, three times in my family alone, people have discovered that their father is not their father. Where is it? In my own family, I discovered that my grandmother was illegitimate. This is my great-grandmother. She was Catholic. She was sainted in our family, so not that what she did is any reflection on her um, morally, but it just never crossed our minds. Nobody can keep these sorts of secrets anymore because the truth is in our DNA and we can test our DNA incredibly easily and the databases are now so vast that anyone can very, very easily find out the truth of who their parents are. That's me and my brother. That's my brother, that's me. See, you can tell the difference, really. I've never actually thought of, um, of colour. I never thought I was black, if that makes sense. I was just, I was Italian. I thought my mum and dad was my dad. And they just treated me as their son, or as in, you know, the love was there. Uh, to be honest with you, I thought I was a throwback, because my granddad was dark like me. And when people were telling me, oh, that can't be your dad, and all this, all this, thing, I just ignored it. My mum was a really strong woman, and that was it. He's my son, you don't need to ask any more questions. I decided to get my own dad a DNA test because for years growing up, I was asked by loads of people, where am I from, where are you from? I want to know where my ancestors have come from and why I'm here. And yeah, just, I couldn't have that question mark over it anymore. Go to your connections, yeah. The DNA test came out on my mum's side, was Italian. On my dad's side, it did literally was just saying, um, came from West Africa. Yeah. It's nice to know now, it's part of me, I know that. But at the same time, I don't know, I'm, I'm just, it, the DNA test wasn't for me as in to find out my original dad. My dad was there when I was born, so he took me on or, or she had a affair when she was with him or that bit, I, I would never know. So whatever the reason was, he was my dad. I don't need to go and look for anyone else. It's quite apparent that I'm different in my family and I've always felt like the cuckoo in the nest. And I've always been a sad person right from 
way, way back. I remember from when I was little, always feeling sad. And it does make me wonder whether the cause of the sadness was a kind of primal or fundamental feeling of being different. I spent hours and hours and hours looking for my dad. Of course, he won't be alive now, but his family will be. I found some lovely people. We've got DNA in common, all on my father's side, and we formed a little Facebook group, and we're all working together on finding this person that we all have in common. I'm meeting my cousin Sharon in Ireland. We're meeting in the apartment we're staying over. And we're trying to put together all the pieces. It's like a jigsaw puzzle with bits missing. <laughs> Married. Married. Harriet. I'm all right, thank you. It just feels really weird, doesn't it's, it? Yeah. It does. It does. <laughs> Can you go into DNA and just show wh where we match? These are all the people we share. Yeah. It's been a year almost, hasn't it? Coming up for a year. Yeah. God, I wonder yeah. if we'll ever get there. Do you think we will? What I'd like to think so. I think that more and more people are doing it. Yes, yeah. I'll take some but, I can't describe it, but it's like the very first step onto feeling that I'm filling in that blank about who my father was, the paternal. So this, these two people here <laughs> are sort of our actual relatives and it's, it's, it's like the beginning. It's hard to describe how important it is. I have to know. Parents today need to realise that even if a child got to their teens and they thought something was a bit fishy, they would be able to just, that would be all blown yeah. out of the water for one DNA test. That certain fact is truth, you can't rewind it. Getting that on a piece of paper is that's just, I think that's quite incredible. I think there's about to be the biggest explosion of DNA testing and skeletons coming out of cupboards. Um, probably a lot of people are a bit worried about it. Before, people could go to their graves with a secret, and now, of course, the secret may come out. There will be quite a lot of problems, but I think there'll also be a lot of happy endings. An amazing report. Uh Vulnerable people when unexpected results turn their lives upside down. Tell if I'm boys out there and we'll do it, cause I'm not having by the day. Lot of you will give one over, I like the shandro, Palama looks out on it. That was the moment Ebla's dreams for a better life turned into her worst nightmare. When she met her husband two years earlier in the Dar refugee camp in Kenya, she never thought it could go so wrong so quickly. Abdi had a visa approved to come to the UK through the Gateway Resettlement Program, but it didn't include his new wife. Shortly after Abdi arrived in Manchester in 2013, he applied to the Home Office for family reunification with his wife and newly born son. Their first application was rejected despite submitting marriage documents and a birth certificate for Muhammad. The Home Office said more evidence was required. Ebla and Abdi felt they had no choice but to go for DNA. 
The test showed an unexpected negative result, and instead of bringing the couple together, it caused a family breakup and left Ebla fearing for her life. Shamed and rejected by some, Ebla felt she had to leave the community. She now lives a nomadic life and relies on her father's support. According to the Home Office, submitting DNA is voluntary. But immigration lawyers like Colin Yeo say in reality the government is pushing this and that is a problem. It should be an absolutely last-ditch resort measure and, um, and, and it's not at the Home Office unfortunately. They seem to be requiring it in more cases than they should and the Home Office does operate at scale. You know, they, they know that in a certain number of cases the results are going to be unexpected and therefore that's going to have very uh, severe consequences um, for the person concerned. Consequences that the Home Office used to recognize for unexpected results, the official guidance said great sensitivity is required in handling such cases and it will normally be appropriate to admit the child. This guidance disappeared in 2014. I don't know whether it was sort of officially withdrawn, whether somebody at the Home Office said, well, look, we've got this nice and humane, sensible policy and we're going to stop it. But certainly there's no guidance of which I'm aware at the moment to officials on how to handle a, a DNA test result where the results aren't what were expected. And that's not a good thing. In 2014, along with the guidance, the Home Office removed funding for DNA. A report by the Inspectorate of Borders and Security found that consequently, refusal rates for Somali and Eritrean applicants doubled. Demands for DNA making reunification impossible. Danish, a Hazara refugee from Afghanistan, is now living in Leicester and wants to bring his wife and son to safety. Despite providing paperwork, the Home Office is demanding more evidence. That means DNA. Danish is saving up to pay for the tests, but his family, who have escaped to Pakistan, are still not safe. They are relying on him. The Hazar ethnic is totally targeted since uh, 2004 or 5. Um, there was a bomb blast which uh, people were killed, uh, about 20, 28 people of our ethnic. Recently, his brother was attacked and hospitalized, so Danish's family have taken the perilous decision to flee again. They now wait for Danish to raise £1,000 for DNA test. I have to pay for it by myself, which I'm just finding out for it very difficult. What's been like the impact on you? The, all the very bad thing is there's just the waiting. You, uh, you know, the, as my wife and my family's lives in danger. The, so I hope they will just give me the, the positive decision. Yeah, you hope so. Over the last 10 years, DNA has been widely used in cases like Danish's and Ebla's. Denise and her team at King's College London say DNA brings families together, but it can also tear them apart. It's very difficult for families when they feel the DNA test is the only route for them. The importance for them, of course, is to bring their family together. So they have a DNA test, and quite often it, it may resolve one question, but bring up some thing else that they weren't expecting. The Home Office says DNA evidence must be voluntary and that a relationship can be proven with documentary evidence. It says they have specific guidance on the need for sensitivity and discretion and when there is a discrepancy in the result, officials will take into account any explanations provided by the applicants. For Abdi, 
DNA has taken away the boy he thought was his son. For people like Ebla, in societies where accusations of adultery are a crime or mortal sin, an administrative process for the Home Office can jeopardize futures. Jamal Osman with that report. And since filming, Danish's family have been granted visas to join him in the United Kingdom, but they're still fearful for their safety as they await their exit visas from Pakistan.